All right, so let's go over some techniques on how to get some really nice skin shading going on. And for that, we're going to be using the Mendel Ray Subsurface Scattering Fast Skin Shader. So let's take a look at the scene we've got going on right now. We've got this uh, character model that I did, and uh, we've just got some lights set up in the scene here. Nothing too fancy, just a standard kind of studio setup, something that will show off the model. And uh, let's take a look at the render. I've already got one uh, set up right here. And this is um, using uh, all Mental Ray Material X materials for the hair and the clothing and everything, uh, except for a Lambert for the skin. So this is just kind of a benchmark, uh, a baseline render to compare the subsurface with that we're going to do later. So you can see it looks, you know, pretty good. We've got some nice lighting going on. Uh, but now we're going to use the subsurface scattering to really bring out some warmth into the skin. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to do is apply a skin shader. Now I've already got one here, but let's go ahead and delete that so we don't get confused. And I'm just going to go into, so underneath the, uh, the Create tab here, I'm just going to go into Materials and pick M-I-S-S-S, -S, Fast Skin Maya. Uh, I already used it once, so it's asking me if I want to use the same light map over again. Uh, that's fine. Uh, if it's the first time using it, that thing's not going to pop up. Okay, so we've got this now here in our Hypershade. And I'm just going to drag this over here with the middle mouse button onto our model. And let's see what we get. So let's open up our render view and make sure you store the render, keep image, and let's do a render. Okay, uh, one thing you'll also notice is that I've got my resolution on this render really low. Uh, I think it's something like uh, 400 by 300 something like that. It's, yeah, 400 by 320. Uh, it's low resolution. I don't have my shadow samples on my lights cranked way up. I don't have my anti-aliasing cranked way up. I want these renders to come out fast because we're going to be doing lots of tweaks, lots of fine-tuning to uh, the light setup and the, uh, the shader. So we don't want to be waiting forever for renders. So please make it easier on yourself and lower your settings while you're doing this kind of stuff. All right, so let's compare the before and the after. Okay, so we've got the, the skin shader on, and it's looking really, uh, I guess, kind of washed out, really soft. We're losing a lot of our shadows, and it's kind of just getting this whole blurry area of kind of red in here. Um, so what I'm going to be showing you is right off the bat how to get it to create the right level of scattering. All right, let's go ahead and save this one. So in the attribute editor for the skin shader, what you want to do very first of all is come way down almost to the very bottom and open up algorithm control. Now this should be the very first thing at the top of the list. Um, and a lot of people spend a lot of time messing around with this stuff in here when really what you need to do first of all is come down to scale conversion. Uh, this is because the shader doesn't know how big the object should be. Um, so, you know, if you have a little tiny figurine made out of wax, uh, this is actually the type of uh, subsurface scattering you might expect to see on it. Very, very soft, very scattered. Uh, if this were a giant 10-foot uh, marble statue, the light's not going to scatter all the way through that marble to the other side. So you're not going to see as much scattering. Uh, so what you really want to do is just play with this number. Now let's say for example it was too little scattering. Then you'd go lower than one. Uh, but usually you're going to want to go higher. So uh, just, just be crazy. Let's put in something really high like 333. And let's see, we've got that render stored. Let's go ahead and do another render now.
Okay, much less subsurface scattering effect. So you compare these two, there's a really big difference. This might actually be that 10-foot marble statue. Uh, and it's actually losing a lot of that, that subsurface scattering that I wanted. Uh, so here's the original with the Lambert. Too much scattering, and I'm going to say too little. Uh, so it's really just a back and forth. You want to dial it in. So let's just save this and try it again. Uh, let's go down maybe 22. Let's see what that looks like. And actually, let's uh, just do a, a smaller area so it renders a little bit faster. Okay. So this is looking a bit better. You know, it's not as um, solid as this one, and it's not as blurry as this one. So, actually, we can get rid of some of these we don't want anymore. Get rid of these two here. So let's compare this one to this one. Okay, so I think this is still a little too um, subsurface scattery. Um, we can see that it's, it's catching a lot of, like from this rim light right here, it's bleeding through all the way through the chin, and that's that's too far. And it's lighting up that ear all the way. So, uh, you know, 22, I, I still think is kind of low. Let's try something like, let's see, we did uh, 333 before. Let's try 180. Store this image. Render region. All right, I kind of wish I'd saved that, actually, uh, that, that other image when it was set to 333 to compare with this one, but, you know, no big deal. Um, so what we're seeing is we're able to see some of this uh, subsurface scattering coming through the ear here, and it's a little bit soft overall. Um, this might be a good setting for a, a realistic person, perhaps. Um, for a cartoony uh, character, a little bit more subsurface scattering is better. It just kind of brings out a little bit of extra warmth, but not that warm. So, you know, you might want to stick in this ballpark if you're doing a realistic character, but we're doing something that's uh, a little bit cartoony, so I want to bring this down a bit. Let's try 60. One big mistake a lot of people make is on realistic characters making that subsurface scattering too pronounced, too soft, because what it does is it really blurs out a lot of your, uh, your fine details. So, you know, there's, there's actually wrinkles and creases in this skin, and it's really uh, softening out a lot of that, and we're losing a lot of that detail. Now you see with this render we've got here, we're getting, you know, a nice variation between shadow, soft areas, and also this uh, light, kind of the rim light lighting up the, the ear there. So this is looking pretty good. I actually like this amount of scattering right here. Uh, so we're in the ballpark of 60. You might keep tweaking it from here, but, you know, uh, for the sake of this video, we're just going to leave it right here for now. Uh, so something else I'm looking at is the overall tone of the skin is maybe a little cool for my taste. I want to warm him up a little bit. So let's go into our subsurface scattering layers and look at these different colors here. Uh, so we've got uh, backscatter color, which is the color of the blood underneath the skin. Uh, and that's what you're going to see in the ear, for example, when you've got a thin area of skin and you've got that rim light shining through it. This is the color we're going to see in there. Uh, subdermal, subdermal scatter color. This is uh, what is underneath the skin. So this is like the color within the skin, epidermal. Subdermal is just underneath the skin. And backscatter color is like the flesh, or the, the muscle, the blood underneath the skin. Uh, so what we can do to warm this up is just change the color here. I'm going to pick a red. Just make it more intense. And we'll save this render and see what we get.
All right, that's looking pretty good. So you can see we warmed it up a bit by doing that. So you'll want to tone these colors, you know, maybe a more cool skin is what you want. Uh, play with these. You could even play with this one a little bit. Uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, don't get too crazy though if it's a realistic character. You don't want to start putting in green or purple or something. Okay, so this is pretty good for a toony character. If you want to do realistic skin, it gets more complicated from here because you're going to be going and painting maps to put in these different channels. And uh, so one thing you want to think about is it's averaging together all these different colors. So one, two, three, four, five colors. The ambient's not going to do anything and I'm going to leave this off and you usually don't need to touch it. Um, so it's, since it's black, it's not really contributing anything. But since there's five different colors getting averaged together, any textures that you paint and put in maps in any of these channels are going to get averaged. And they're going to show up only about one-fifth as intense as you paint them. So, for example, in the epidermal scatter color, this is where you might paint freckles or uh, liver spots or... Uh, maybe he's got a scar and it's discolored. You could put it in here. And you're going to want to paint those things really intense. So if someone's got freckles and they're just kind of, you know, a little bit darker than the, the skin around it, and you're painting it in here, you want to go really dark. I like really dark brown, maybe even black. Uh, subdermal scatter color. This is where you're going to put things like veins, um, kind of a, a mottled uh, color like a lot of people have more uh, more blush on their cheeks and their nose so you could paint uh, a really intense red into those areas and then leave it uh, a little bit more orangey like the way it was before I messed with it uh, in other areas um, is it for veins like blue veins uh, you know when you're looking at your own skin blue veins show up very subtly it's not like a really intense blue but you since it's getting averaged, you want to paint it really intense blue. Uh, if he's got like uh, dark circles around his eyes, you know, he's been staying up all night working on rendering and mental ray, you're going to want to paint that really dark purple. And then when it gets averaged, it's going to look just kind of generally purple. But in your texture map, it's going to look like a black eye. Um, <laughs> diffuse color, I don't usually play with this too much. Overall color, this is where you put things that are on top of the skin. So if any character is wearing makeup, face paint, lipstick, eyeshadow, anything that's on top of the skin goes into overall color. And then uh, finally, one thing is specularity. If you want any variation of specularity, Heaven help you, this shader is horrible when it comes to specularity. It can be done. You can like paint weight, you can paint maps and, and stick them in these channels. But if you want any sort of variation of specularity over the surface, it's going to be a lot of work to get this to work. Um, there's tutorials you can watch, but it's just a giant headache. So just be forewarned if you're going to get into a, like a realistic character with realistic variations of specularity. Um, just know it's going to take a lot of work and effort to do it. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Please send me an email um, if, if any of this is confusing to you. And so now that you're finished with setting up your subsurface scattering skin, you could go in and crank up your anti-aliasing settings and your shadow detail and all that good stuff because um, we're done with tweaking for now.